earlier that Madison turns out great songwriters. They also turn out endless number of great actors. We have about two pages of actors who started at Madison. People like Irwin Shaw, who wrote the great, uh, the, the, the great Lions, uh, Sid Gannis, president of the Motion Picture Academy, Arnie Copelson, class of 52, who got the Best Picture Award, uh, Jim Giannopoulos, president of one of the great studios, and of course, Larry Kasher, and the list goes on and on. Well, today, we take in another actor, Martin Landau, class of 46. <clears throat> Martin Landau was in 75 movies, probably some of which everybody here has seen. Cleopatra, the greatest story ever told, uh, and several others. The last one he was in that I saw was Crimes and Misdemeanors with Woody Allen. He had a leading role. So he was a star, but most of us probably remember him most from Mission Impossible with Barbara Bain. Anybody see that? <clears throat> He passed away last year uh, and would have liked to have been here, but we simply say, Martin Landau, we add you to the list of wonderful actors that has been produced by James Madison High School. Our next person that we will honor is Dr. Leslie Bow. Lee Bow. Uh, Les was class of 51, and his claim to fame is geriatrics. Uh, we all know that older, elder people are taken care of in this country. But he, in 1972, founded the Department of Geriatrics at Mount Sinai, where he initiated America's first board-approved residency and fellowship programs in geriatric medicine. A model has been replicated not just in the United States, but all over the world. He also established the first geriatric rotation for all Mount Sinai medical students. Professor Liebau has put it this way, the only way to establish quality care for the elderly is to establish a strong link between nursing homes and medical education. Dr. Liebau hasn't let me alone because he has in his head the question of how come Madison turns out so many great people and the schools around, Lincoln, Midwood, same family, same background, don't. Someday less you'll get the answer. But for now, we ask to come to the microphone one of Madison and the world's greatest geriatric people. Let Dr. Les Levo. <laughs> well, thank you for that sweet uh, introduction, and uh, it's a big thrill uh, in a uh, young man that I am to be acknowledging uh, uh, such a moment. Thank you very much, uh, Dick, for being so creative and for your nice words. I'm going to spend about one minute about geriatrics and the rest of my precious time about Madison. If you want to know more about geriatrics and Lebo, I checked this morning and the Google and uh, Wikipedia is pretty good. Basically, uh, I was in internal medicine, you know, it was a strange name for the field I chose, but thousands of us chose it. Uh, internal meant chemistry, but it also sounds like heart, lungs, abdomen, gastrointestinal, but doesn't talk about the brain. And that's what bothered me most about internal medicine. So I decided geriatrics would be a way to embrace the brain and the mind, which were my first loves uh, in terms of uh, science and medicine. Uh, <clears throat> And that's what I did. Oh, you need that. OK. The, um, 
The singing in the New York City school system included a wonderful category called listener. And I believe it or not, it was in all the schools, and I was a listener. I never forgot the name of my teacher, Hortense E. Silkman. God bless her. She said, Leslie, you're a good guy, pretty good student, but you're screwing up a chorus. <laughs> so just either move your lips or be quiet. <laughs> it was a little traumatic. I mean, it could be years of psychotherapy to work that one out. I do have a son who's a psychotherapist, and he hasn't given me a chance to use his skill, but it might help. Anyhow, uh, thank God grandchildren make a difference, and so Linda and I have two precious grandchildren, as many of you do, uh, and uh, Henry is here with his sister, and Henry is the only person I ever knew who seems to really enjoy singing along with Grandpa. And we could do the Marseillaise for them now, Henry, but we won't. But he's terrific. He's got the Marseillaise down pat, and I don't even know how come I still remember it, but I do. And that's been a pleasure. He's a pleasure. His uh, darling sister, uh, Hannah, is here somewhere. And she hasn't yet been singing with Grandpa, but we, we're going to look forward to that. She is... Uh, very tender about these scars I have up here. And that's a quick story about my wonderful wife, Linda, 44 years. Uh, I, even doctors get sick. I was in Paris celebrating some guy's anniversary. He's a French student who came to work with me, and I lost consciousness. And I wouldn't be here today if Linda wasn't so cool under pressure. But I didn't know she knew anything about healthcare. She's a social worker. She loves people, made my life wonderful, but somehow rescued me. And in the middle of my unconsciousness in this Parisian hotel, she says to herself, I wonder if that young man who Leslie and I took out to celebrate his engagement a few hours ago left his phone number with the front desk of the hotel. So in French, she asked that question. And I assure you, I wouldn't be here if the answer was no. The guy said, don't do what they're going to do. Take you to the nearest emergency room. Go to the only neurosurgical hospital in all of France. Uh, we did that. I don't remember because I was unconscious. <laughs> but we did it, and um, I stayed for seven weeks. It was so much fun. But they rescued me, and uh, thanks to Linda's coolness under fire, I would say, and optimism. A couple of tears are pretty normal, I would say. So anyhow, long story short, I got better. Uh, they sent the doctor with me on the airplane. I don't know what he would do if, if I had a crisis flying from Paris to New York, but he was sitting next to me, so that was very reassuring. And I got back to New York Hospital in Sinai, and I got better. My children came to visit me in uh, Paris every weekend. Of course, they now speak French. So it was an adventure, honey. Thank you very much. Now, in the process of what geriatricians do, I would like to take the credit for the fact that my mother-in-law, who is sitting in the first row with this beautiful blue uh, sweater, is 100 years old. <laughs> of course, if her son-in-law wasn't a geriatrician, we don't know what the story would be. And I have a motto. A motto. A motto.
Terrific. You haven't changed a bit. Oh, that's Linda's mother, and uh, I was the beneficiary ultimately, and so are my uh, children and grandchildren. Unless you have two minutes. Two minutes. If they only had said that to me at my bar mitzvah, I would have gotten out a lot earlier. <laughs> two minutes, what can I do in two minutes? <laughs> Anyhow, Larry Kasher was mentioned. He was a great guy. Too bad he's gone. Talk he, about Kiki. Talk about Kiki. Well, yeah, I was pretty lucky. Um, thank you. I was pretty lucky. We had a, a pretty smart class, nervous immigrant kids. And we had an organization called Go-Getters. I don't even know where we got the money to buy the 10 bucks for the black jacket with the gold letters, but there were about 30 of us in Go-Getters. And one of my best friends in Go-Getters was uh, Kiki. You all know Kiki is Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And when I asked her, in visiting her after my recovery, how did you get the name Kiki? She said, well, I had a sister a year older than me and I kept kicking the crib and I, everybody liked the word Kiki, so that's how I got the name. Well, she's still a very lovely person. Very, very lovely person. And I was a bit nervous, even though classmate and I was now recovered from this damn brain thing. So I said, this is a, Final for me. I said, Kiki, it's amazing. Here we are in the most important, strongest court in the world, the most respected Supreme Court in the whole world, and you and I are sitting talking for an hour about Jackie Robinson. And she brought that up. Did I go watch Jackie? She said. So now you know about her diverse interests and all these other things. And here you are. So she said, Leslie, a lot of it was luck. Well, she was always pretty modest, very beautiful, and very smart. So I said, well, that's true for me and for all of us. Luck is a big part of life. And I think I quoted Branch Rickey, the brilliant guy who brought Jackie Robinson uh, and crossed the color line uh, to Brooklyn. Branch Rickey said, luck is the residue of design. It's a great phrase. So anyhow, in summary, um, it was a pleasure to spend time with her. We're still corresponding. It's amazing that we had a class that produced a Supreme Court justice who was probably the most well-known justice on the court, maybe the most beloved as well. Not bad for our school. Thank you. Dr. Charles Dubrovna, class of 53, is Madison's Renaissance man. Extraordinary physician, humanist, and bioethicist. All of us at Madison in 1953 knew that Chuck Dubrovna would be on the top. And so he was. He graduated second in the class of 1953 most likely to succeed, and was in all the organizations. He basically had it all. On to Yale, graduating first in the BS school, and then on to NYU Medical School, where he graduated first. For 48 years, he's remained on the medical fa faculty at NYU, specializing in obstetrics and gynecology, and basically helping couples challenged with reproductive difficulties and infertility. But it wasn't over for Dr. Dubrovna when his career was waning. It was actually starting. He became president of the uh, Ethical Culture and Humanist Society. And then after that, he actually co-founded another organization, Bioethics, where if people say, well, what's, what's bioethics? Uh, it's now an organization that deals with uh, uh, reproduction, uh, and abortion, cloning, within the framework of reproductive rights. 
it's clear that he's done something very important because the United Nations has now associated themselves with this program. There's another point I have to make. When I was standing outside, somebody walked up to the wall and said, I saw Patricia Dubrovna's, Patricia Bruder Dubrovna's picture up there. She must be his sister. I said, no, she's his wife. And so today we recognize the fact that Chuck Dubrovna and Patricia Bruder Dubrovna are the first husband-wife team to ever be on the wall. Pat, Chuck, So now we welcome Chuck Dubrovna to the podium. Let me start by expressing my gratitude for being included in this very impressive group of alumni who received this honor. I really am very appreciative. And looking back over my four years at Madison, the highlight was just a single moment. On January 23rd, 1952, I had been told by my friend Peggy Freundlich that she was making a surprise sweet 15 birthday party for her daughter Margie, for her sister Margie. And the fellow who was supposed to take her to the party was ill. She asked it could be arranged, would I take Peggy instead? And once we got there, I would be free to leave the party for my own friend's party, the Warriors, which was taking place at the same time. And well, for that very good small deed, I received great rewards. Whom should I see the moment I arrived but Patsy Bruder, who had recently transferred to Madison, having spent the previous year and a half on the national tour of The Innocents and in a play on Broadway. Well, it was love at first sight. We left for the Warrior Party together, and the rest is history. This past January marked our 66 years as a couple, and we look forward to celebrating our 60th wedding anniversary. When, excuse me. There is another page. Speaking of the Warriors, uh, we called ourselves a social athletic club. But of note, just about everyone on our softball team later wound up with an advanced academic degree. My own athletic career was not superlative. I ran cross country and the 220 on the track team and did manage to finish third in one meet. Being left-handed, I played either right field or first base on the Warriors softball team. My parents had bought me a first baseman's trapeze mitt. Since Marv Wagman was much better at first base, I usually played the outfield with my trapeze mitt, and the trapeze mitt would often evoke cries of unfair from our opponents. Where I did excel was in handball, 